Welcome and thanks for joining me on my adventure through the KHWCC watchmaking school in Le Locle, Switzerland. In this episode, Henry goes into details about the amazing watchmaking short courses that he runs for watchmakers to watch collectors and watch enthusiasts alike. He also demonstrates how they use the profile projector for watch repair and how it can be utilized in watchmaking itself. <laughs> Uh, this is my second workshop. Um, I have five plus one in the corner, six student benches here for short classes. So I'm gonna have one, I run them a few times a year. Now I will have my last one in November and we will be dealing with uh, gears and hairsprings for uh, antique or vintage watches. How should watchmakers deal in the proper way when you have a rusty pinion in a watch, whether it's antique or vintage. New, if you already know, you're supposed to get the original part, but that's not gonna happen with an antique watch. You have to make each part by hand. Mm -hmm. So then we discuss and we make some trials, practical trials during this week with a small group of students, usually between two to maximum six. So I can't have more than six because I need the, the teacher bench there. And now I think we are four, four full booked for the November class and um, yeah we will that means we will run it and that means they will learn about yeah gears wheels and pinions uh, we will take a look at the motion work because that's very often broken uh, especially with antique uh, and the same deal with hairsprings so one part of that program is gears and one is hairsprings uh, steel hairsprings with or without brege curve, what to do if they are rusty, how, where do you find them, how do you put them together, how do you vibrate them, and so on. And then they get some practical trial how to raise the brake uh, curve as well. And how long does that course run? That short course? Uh, all my short courses so far, I try to limit them to maximum five days, okay. because I got a lot of indication that most watchmakers and collectors and watch enthusiasts wouldn't have more than one week. That's why I have limited my short courses so far to be maximum one week. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it's we have uh, some micro mechanical tools here. We can see each bench have a uh, X1 from Vichy. That's because they sometimes do timing. Mm. Uh, then they have a task movement. In the last course, I always use, by the way, the 6498 because I don't know at what level everybody are and it's unnecessary to make it more difficult than it needs to be. Uh, and in my Restoration 1 class, I'm teach the first thing they learn is how do you restore a pallet in a pallet fork? Because that's a tricky thing to do. You have to then take out the sheet or the broken pallet stone or jewel. Then you have to learn how to polish the face of that to remove the sheet and then to put it back with the shellac. And then we do before and after timing here, which is always really, really cool because you see all oh, the watch is broken. Clearly we can see that the exit pallet jewel is causing a loss of 70 degree of amplitude on the, on the entry side of the escapement. Uh, and then we note it down or take a quick photo of the initial broken uh, escapement and then they repair it. And then they set the stones back in, in their initial state the correct depth they had before, and then we see if there is any change. Uh, and that that's always uh, very, seems to be very eye-opening for watchmakers because it's not something they would do every day. And it's a real restoration because it doesn't, it means that you're not throwing away the original jewel, you're restoring the actual real jewel. And you can do that at least two, three times before you have to actually uh, replace the jewel. And then uh, some of the benches also have here motors. That's because these benches, this one, that, and though, that one, we have three uh, complete Horia lathe, eight millimeter lathe, and those three benches, the students would then be grinding the watch part they do in the one week class, uh, or learn some other turning. So I have, uh, that would mean three guys are doing something else while three are turning, and then swap around, for example. Also behind you, we have this profile projector that I did the drawing this is an old one, but it doesn't matter. They, they all work. And here's another. This is a, another part that somebody did in the past.
This is a yoke for a watch. That's an exercise to to make um, a yoke for a, a, an antique uh, watch. And the way that they they draw this is that they would put up here the original one, and then they would be able to see the the profile on this half transparent paper. So if I put, for example, a small watch part there. You see this part, you start to see an outline. This is just a circular part. I don't have the full paper here now, but... You can imagine, yep. you have now the part here. <coughs> and then you would just draw, you would just first have to see that you have uh, which magnification, this is 20 times now. And it will be this big. And that would make sense. This would be 20 times larger than this one here. And that's how you would draw the watch part. Uh, we can even get another mode with this. Uh, we can see the surface, but it's hard. Um, if we have any... We can even see the surface. Yeah, here you see. So now we get the photographic view. They call oh, it. Yes, I see. It. Yeah. They call it ep episcope mode. Oh wow! Maybe I put this larger and so what so we can see more. Yeah. Is that a stamp or something? Uh, yeah, that's um, that's the stamp. Yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the first trial I did with the pantograph. Um, and it's a it's a cuff link. Ah, it's a cuff link. So I actually wanted to I bought hundred of these uh, stainless steel cuff links. Yep. And then I wanted to print the school logo on each and every one like this. So if you have the antique part, you can put in here, trace, and just make a new one of it. Yeah. 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 Could. And then usually you would just need to uh, have this mode. Mm -hmm. This mode here, the photographic or episcope mode as they call it, it's not that much we would use it. It's more this profile projector. Mm. And now this is exactly uh, to probably one or two micron precise, uh, 20 times larger diameter than the actual piece. And then I would just draw this circle here, mm. take this drawing to the pantograph mm. and then just follow the outline. Yeah. And then I have made the same part. part. Yeah. So you could just theoretically then just put a watch part there and do exactly the same. It can cost thousands of francs or you can get it very cheap because you see no one wants to have this in their home if they don't yeah. use it. So yeah. you can get it really cheap. And this is not only for watchmaking, it's for every uh, mechanical uh, industry actually. It's just a, it can also just be used for uh, uh, doing quality control. Yeah. Quality control of parts in series. So it, it's useful for factories even. And then for restoration, it's it's really interesting machine. This one, together with the jig borer or the pantograph, for example, it's a dream. And then we have a Shoblin 70 there uh, for communal use by everybody. So it's it's very complete, even though that I don't use this room that much, it's only on specific occasion I use it. And where do we find the information of like the upcoming short courses? So. I have gathered a list of watchmakers who have um, who are interested. As soon as I offer a course, please email me. So I have a list with almost 100 names now mm -hmm. that I've collected over the years. Also, when I go to America, I meet. I teach also in America one-week classes. Um, and then when I have a, a course offered, then I send this, or actually Svenja sends the email. Mm -hmm. And then I also do a little bit marketing. I don't know how effective it is, but I do, before each course, I try to do at least two months before or one month before, or as early as I know that the course is coming out, I do a bit advertising on Facebook because I don't know any other way to do it and that's, that's it. And then I might mention it on my blog um, or on Instagram or something like that. But I, it's not that I do proactively uh, pay a lot of money to get the word out or anything like that. Uh, or 
sometimes I recommend people who are in contact with me on Facebook, yeah, once in a while, check in on the homepage. Because on my homepage, everything is all the time updated. Okay. Yeah. So the moment we know about the course, it's going to immediately be there. If it's not there, that's because we haven't decided yet which courses to do and when are we able to do them. So the homepage, I guess, is the, the best okay. one. I hope you enjoyed it. I loved uh, being there. Henrik's such a nice guy and I was learning so much from him on the day. Stay tuned. This mini-series will continue and another episode will come out shortly.